Hi, Fraser. Hello. What Hi, Sally. What an awkward start. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we always have technical difficulties, or at least I do, I feel like. So what are we doing today, Shelly? <laughs> books? What did you, what was the word hype? Books that we're yeah. hyped to read? Hype, hype train. I, As the tastemakers that pour the wine. <laughs> <laughs> he says that we're such influencers. <laughs> No, but that's okay. Uh, no, but we're excited to, these are like anticipated reads in our own collections. Yeah, these are, well, yeah, these are books that, these are like the top books that I hope to read this year, basically. You know, like the ones that I, yeah, wanted to probably get to last year, but didn't. <laughs> basically. Okay. Yeah. Mine. Well, I do have a 10 nonfiction books I want to read this year and then 10 classics I'm reading. This <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> 10 classics I want to read this year. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you had a face for that, but <laughs> I'm just waiting. No, just okay. the nonfiction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, none of these are nonfiction. My, so these are all books that I would like to get to this year, but I feel like I've already overcommitted myself with the 20. I don't know why. Oh. I just don't want to feel too like locked into what I'm going to read in 2024. But these are all books that when I picked them up, I felt a flutter of excitement. <laughs> yeah. Good, yeah. Good. Yeah. Do you want and to they're start? Different. They're different than, different than what? the classics and the nonfiction that oh. I chose. Yeah. Right. Makes they're, sense. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be redundant. I'm so don't. hype about this book. I would like it to appear in four categories. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's something I would do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, best fiction I read this year or last year, Middle March. Best classic I read last year, Middle March. Best, <laughs> best epic sprawling novel I read last year, Middle March. Like, I'm just yeah. like, I'm, yeah. Yeah, so. just do the Oscars, but it's just Middle March. Yeah, best supporting much. character, Middle March. <laughs> oh yeah, but I mean, but for reals, like because they did, it did have the best supporting character. We're just not going to get. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to uh, yeah. start then? So you're going least type to most hype. No, I oh no, no, I have like, I, I have, so my first category is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell you when there's a different category. Okay, books. I'm hyped to pick up because of other booktubers. Oh, okay. Influenced by other books. This is the first category. So the first one is Oscar and Lucinda mm. by Peter Carey. Um, Sandy just read this. Aaron Facer had read this. And Sandy just finished this and said it was really good. And she even said it was a Shelley book. Mm -hmm. I've got the um, um, Everyman edition of that. I do. You really do, really? Yeah. So we could buddy read it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not gonna get excited right now. This is so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's a. It's a little bit of a chunkster, but I've heard it's just so good. I just feel like it's for me. You know, like you ever book. It's Harry right there. But anyway, oh, yeah. if you ever, if you ever think, I, I just have that feeling that the book is for me, and it's got a great, it's got a cool cover, well designed cover. Yeah. All right. Is that like solitaire or something? I don't know. He's so solitary right now. He's but so... together with her. <laughs> okay, so what's well, your first book, sir? I'm going to be alternating between commercial choices and um, like self-published slash indie authors. Nice. And my first choice is going to be to complete The Human Target. I read mm. this one already and I got it for Christmas, so I'm going to reread and then complete it. Um, nice, and that's a graphic novel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a, a reimagining of this character who, like, nobody had ever really heard of in DC, which is sort of what King is known for. He takes, like, these mm, curmudgeon, not curmudgeon, like, on the fringes characters and then reimagines them and makes like a intricate sort of more 
alternate version, but still set in the DC universe um, version wow. of the character. That's awesome. Those are beautiful, yeah. by the way. Mm hmm. All right. We have a lot to get through. <laughs> yeah. I thought we were doing like four books, and Fraser was like, I have 12. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah. Um, okay. So the next one is The English Patient by yeah. Michael Ondaatje or Ondaatje? Ondaatje. Um, Ondaatje. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Um, Anyways, I saw this at uh, Brittany from Literarily Smitten. She like relaunched her channel and she was oh. reading this to get herself out of a reading slump. And she said in the vlog, she was like, that's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite books of all time. And I was like, I have that book and it's not super long. And I was like, mm, I want to read that. You know, I'm easily influenced over here. So yeah, and it's a love story. I actually set during World War II I don't know, but it looks good and romantic and stuff. I liked it a lot. You liked it? Mm -hmm. I didn't know you yeah, I liked it. the movie a lot, too. I know the, the movie's supposed to be like tears, you know. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I well, try I, enough. Yeah. The movie's pretty close to the book from what I remember. Oh, well, maybe it's. I would rather read something sad than watch something sad. The music and all, you know, it just gets me. <laughs> yeah, the music. <laughs> yeah. I'm not kidding you. Like, music really just, it's like, it stirs within me my emotions. Emotional, manipu <sighs> emotional manipulation successful. Yeah, yeah, it's super successful for me. Like, the suspense music can be playing in the background, and all of a sudden I'm getting scared in my book. That's not scary. I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go. What's your next one? My next one is mark nash's uh self-published novel the Wonderful. death of the author in triplicate and this is like a little uh, i guess it really doesn't like it. there we go but um yeah this is a postmodern work as i think most of mark nash's books are and it's a, like all about a detective i believe and then it like spirals out from there and i had actually started it before my brain broke last year and so i'm going to restart it and make a concerted effort um and it's like deceptively like it looks semi-chunky but it's not because it's like a a paper book um, oh I, or not, like like a like a, a pocket paper bag oh i just oh. showed another one <laughs> do you want to do the next one <laughs> I'm also excited about Doris Ahoy by uh, Charles. Charles Heathcote. Yeah. I, I read the first two of his books, which are on the back, are Doris and uh, Indisputably Doris, and these have been fantastic. This is a self-published book, and it's about an older woman who's sort of like, uh, it's narrated all from her husband's perspective, but she's like just a, a character. They're an older couple, and she gets up to seemingly innocuous, even like very mundane things in the community. But the way that it's spun by Charles uh, is just really endearing and always very funny. And Harold is simultaneously like obviously in love with his wife so much, but also doesn't quite understand her in like a generational kind of way that only my grandparents know because they don't have very good communication skills basically <laughs> you know, there's like yeah there's some yeah. weird interplay there that is just um, yeah fantastic he loves her with like for who she is but not necessarily he doesn't always understand her kind yeah, of thing or understand how to effectively communicate and neither of them really do like it, they're always circuitously trying to suss each other out basically hmm interesting sounds cute though it's wow. very good yeah <laughs> we're keeping we're keeping uh booktuber hype i guess um for me the category i'm like it can actually go pretty far this this category the next one is the passion by jeanette winterson mm. it's set during the napoleonic wars and it's again very short i actually just saw hannah from hannah's box talk about oh. this today actually and oh. she was just saying that she read it in her 20s and really loved it and then she gave it to her husband and he read it um and he really loved it and it was recommended to 
her by a friend who really so then I was like I own that box like I need to get to that plus I I've heard good things about Jeanette Winterson and I would like to just finally kind of taste and taste the author like what her writing is all about and um her style I've heard it's a little bit weird a little bit quirky but I feel like she might be for me you know I don't think I've heard of it she she did the book uh, Orange is the Only Fruit and um yeah she's like uh she like all of her books are very short and they're all a little either whimsical or science fiction-y and I think some people really get along with her writing and some people really don't but Orange is the Only Fruit is a memoir and she grew up in a very I think like religious family and she is a lesbian and so she it's like kind of the you figuring herself out during that time and growing up in a family that has uh beliefs and uh ca- you know carry themselves differently than like you want to carry yourself or that you believe yourself to be so mm. yeah different interesting yep that's my mm-hmm. elevator pitch for Jeanette Winterson I don't know anything else about her really <laughs> Do you want to do another one? To, oh, since I did two? Oh, since you did two. Okay, some um, booktube related, booktube inspired. Uh, I have um, Mary Doria Russell's The Sparrow. Oh, I, I just it. read Doc by, oh, do you? Another buddy read. <laughs> yeah. um, she, I read Doc by her, but then I have a commenter, like a community community member who reaches me through comments. And she was saying that, she thinks that I'll love the sparrow, like I'll really like the sparrow because Doc was kind of like middling for me, like a middling read. Um, mm-hmm. But that the sparrow was excellent by her, so I was like, okay, cool. I want to read this. Yeah, I think I have that on Audible. So you'll somewhere. finish it in four days, <laughs> and then I'll be like yeah. over here trying to get to it. Yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So what's your next one? Another commercial one that I think you'll recognize. It's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't even broken it because I don't know. You can only break the seal once, you know. No. <laughs> Mine but, yeah. has a broken seal. This is a book that I want to be very on for, you know, like reading House of Leaves kind of on, you know. I, it's postmodern and it's uh, like I think will take a lot of brain power but it also feels like sort of a project that could you know get me out of a slump or, or whatever you know because it's engaging me that much it might consume me so I also want to have a certain amount of time available as well <laughs> so yeah if I it okay. does hook me then I am not like I guess I'll go work for a while even though I'd rather be reading <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Kind of deal. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, well, since you mentioned that one, I'll mention this. I want to read um, Those Who Leave and Those Who Stay, the third book in the Neapolitan trilo- quadrilogy <laughs> in the Neapolitan series yeah. by Elena Ferrante. I read the first two in 2022. Like per like partly for like for your recommendation I and i love believe, them i can't believe you didn't pick up the third one in the whole year i would have died <laughs> i know you would have <laughs> i just i've been so um i don't know i don't see again it's like i don't know what's stopping me like i really love i really love her books and they're so they're so um they're and really you moving don't want to, it me. to end yeah i really don't maybe that's it maybe that's it yeah yeah, and you, yeah, anyways, I'll, I'll file something, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, I'll tell you later, not on, not on okay. YouTube. <laughs> sure. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, though. So, another one. Oh, I guess that... you inspired me to pick that, you know, pick that book. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> this one, I was actually sent by Charlene Ellsby, as you can tell, it's like an arc, and it's mm. her latest, I don't remember what it is about but I feel very bad for not having gotten to this because I got it before it was even released and now it's Gil like reading. way overdue yeah but I always adore all of her things so oh god yeah there hasn't been a release of hers that I think I rated below four stars and I think only one was four stars and the other were like full five it's always yeah. like you know 
it, it usually has a female protagonist that is unhinged and that's like catnip to me so it is yes. it is yes okay i think this actually well i could really keep going so i guess these are all about two <laughs> no, i'm just kidding um olive at a book olive so you have one theme i have one no oh. i have two yeah that's olive his at a book. only good book <laughs> yeah actually well i was gonna have a theme of like like um, books by authors that i only want to read one of their books but then i thought that's kind of convoluted <laughs> so, yeah um but yeah rules of civility i've just heard really good things about this book in particular mostly from olive at a book olive <laughs> like she, she loves this book she rereads it every summer um yeah, and so like favorite, every year right? huh it's her favorite it's book her, yeah it's her yeah. favorite fiction book of all time so mm -hmm. um you know, and so every summer when she talks about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I own that book. I should read it. <laughs> yeah. 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 But. Yeah. All the other ones, granted, I've only tried two others. I tried the Lincoln Highway, hated it, DNF'd and, it, and then yeah. I, I made it through. Gentlemen um, in Moscow? Yeah, but it was like, whatever. Like, I barely remember anything about it, basically. Yeah, I've not heard great things about his other books, but then I know that like a lot of people like this one. I loved it. Yeah, it was a, it was a five star. For me. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I know, and like I have this like it's like in the exact edition that I love, like oversized paperback, mm -hmm. and I'm like I just haven't. I I must get to it soon. Okay. <sighs> it doesn't okay, look go ahead. very oversized. It's not like it's not an oversized. It's just I guess the I don't know like um. It's not a pocket paperback, though. No. Like the regular no. paperback edition. Pocket sucks. But, in, well, I shouldn't say that because my next one is a pocket book. <laughs> How dare you? Well, good. I'm glad. You know what? I'm glad because. How dare yeah. you? Okay, go ahead. This is a, another one from, um, um, what's that press called? Um, Corona Samizat, uh, who is a Rick Harsh on BookTube. He's the owner, editor, operator oh. person, and he is making it his mission basically to publish really great authors that are doing postmodern works, mostly, mostly like uh, politically left. And sometimes I think like three quarters of it is like satirical works that are pretty biting, but it depends. Like Mark Nash's new book is also through that publisher. Um, and this is a Canadian and oh. I it's very like comedic but also very like um a similarly satirical biting uh really enjoyable read that uh, mark nash uh read and recommended as well so yeah i'm pretty much almost always aligned with his taste so it'll be good and i really want to get to it in part two because uh you know I had spent a good amount of money ordering a huge load of uh, books from that publisher. He's oh, over I really in, love like... the cover, by the way. Oh, I can't remember where he is, but he's like in Eastern Europe. Oh. Where he is. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going to order from him, you order like a, a big amount to make it worth it. And he's also like wildly um, generous, I would say, as a publisher and a shipper. He like makes it explicit that whatever weight limit that you are buying from him, like if you want, say, a large book and a small one, he will weigh them and then whatever weight it goes up to for the next tier that you've paid for. Like if you paid $15 for 1.2 kilograms or whatever, and mm -hmm. the books weigh one kilogram, he actually put more, more books in there to bring it up to the weight limit to make it worthwhile for everybody. Oh, wow. And you can either like, he'll, he'll even like insist on it. Like he, in his email to me, he's like, I must include two more books. <laughs> he doesn't even oh. make it optional. He's like, so you can choose them or I'll choose them for you or, or whatever. So it's just, wow. yeah. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. Well, I like the cover. I like the way that it was designed. I like that sort of vintage green. Mm -hmm. I liked it a lot. Mm. Well, since since I was on the olive train, I will just talk another one. She she inspired me to buy Sirens and Muses by Antonia um Angris. This was like Olive's favorite book, I think in 2022. 
So I bought it to read in 2023 and then I didn't. And I even, I love this cover. I mean, I don't own that many pretty books, but this, I feel like this is a very pretty book. Mm. And um, I just feel like I'll like it. It's supposed to be like, um, I think semi dark, dark academia talking about art. Mm. And I love all that kind of stuff. Like I love, mm -hmm. I love conversations good. about art. Yes, yes, yes. Dark academia. Give it yeah. to me now. I know, right? Although I half know. the time it'll say that it's dark academia and then I read it. I'm like, this is dark academia Ooh. at all. Like babble. Bleh. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just recently unhauled um, the Poppy Wars oh, because yeah. I know that people said that it was good, but then I was like, I have such a bad taste in my mouth for yellow face. Mm. And from what I've heard, they're like, oh, it's forgiving. Her, her characters are, they don't grow at all, but it, I, people forgive her for that because it's YA. I was like, I don't want to have to forgive somebody for bad characters or like flat characters. So oh, I I liked the Poppy Wars quite a bit. I know you it, did. It is, yeah, like it, it was definitely situated in YA territory. I think the character grows quite a bit, but it's one of the most brutal YA books that I've ever read as well. There's a lot of intensity <laughs> in those books. Yeah. But yeah right. my next commercial read is something i've wanted to read for like three years i think the posthumous memoirs is yeah kind of like a if not a classic then like a cult classic you know mm. like i see it everywhere it's very like one of the earmarks for postmodern lit and so it's something that i should have gotten to quite a while ago everyone seems to have really enjoyed it I don't remember anybody disliking it hmm. and yeah it's it's supposed to be just like a wild ride same with like if I hadn't had a bitter taste in my mouth from the brothers uh Karamazov I pro I'd also like it's 50 50 between this and Master and Margarita but because the Russians are irking me no I'm sorry I'm sorry well, yeah, Russians, they're a particular flavor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, this, next, this next is like um, authors that I think I'll really like. Like, I, I mean, I'm sure I bought them because of book two, but I just feel like they're going to be great. Mm -hmm. And the first one, I have one book. And then the last two authors, I have two books from them. So I might just show them at the same time. So if that throws you off, I'm sorry. So this first one... I, it's um, Milkman by Anna Oops. Burns. That's a phenomenal book. Yeah, yeah. Like I've heard about, I've heard that. I want to like read it, read it. There's a lot of block text. It's very stream of consciousness, but because it's set during the troubles in Ireland, I'm like, I just really want to, I just really want to read it. Like, <laughs> but the then I avoid it. Great. Yeah, I know. But like, I don't know. I've just, you know, I've just not been, I've not been audio booking very much, so mm -hmm. I'm like, I really want to read, reread, read, like read, read it, read it. So, and maybe, it's a pretty book. Maybe an Irish person in your ear is exactly what you need. No, <laughs> you always, you're always trying to get me. So, like, <laughs> it's anyways. a singular experience. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Mm -hmm. So, the next so. one I have is one that I saw on Sean's channel, Travel Through Stories, two mm. years ago. The Secret Wait, Service by Wendy Walker. Yeah, it's supposed to be another great um, but little known, um, fantastic postmodern work. And it is about Secret Service, but it's like supposedly goes into, I can't remember, but like really granular detail about like, societal issues surrounding it and mm -hmm. at one point i think that a chapter is narrated by like a piece of art or something yeah That's awesome. it, there's something strange that always like piques my interest about it when i look at it but yeah i've been meaning to get to that forever all right this is my first double 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 what? <laughs> you ready? I have, I have two books by this author, so I'm oh, just going to show okay. them at the same time. Okay? Okay. So, like, so oh, yeah. Madeline Miller's books. I feel like I'm the last, literal last person on this earth 
that has read <laughs> crazy fox. Don't even, okay? Like, don't even. I wonder if you'll fall into the Cersei camp or the Song of Achilles camp. Usually it's one like or the I'm other. I feel like I'm gonna like this one more. Yeah. It makes me want to start with this one and then I'll never read Cersei. So then I'm like, should I start with a book I'm going to like, that I think I'm going to like less? Cersei. Because I really love the Iliad. Like, that's my jam. That's like my book. That is, I love that book. <laughs> Mm -hmm, <laughs> so I'm like, mm -hmm. I feel like I don't know Frazier help mm -hmm. <laughs> why haven't I read these yet that's a <gasps> perfect segue <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> this is the new translation that I've been waiting for for literally seven years <laughs> oh my gosh it's so, so beautiful yeah I got it for Christmas so I'm very excited for that the Emily Wilson translation, yeah, the Odyssey was phenomenal uh, from her. Yeah, she was just incredible. So yeah, I even have different versions of this that I purchased previous to the Odyssey. And then I was like, you know what? I will just wait for hers because yeah, she's a boss. I am so, my heart swells with jealousy that you own that book. Like, bah. I know I want it. So, but like, there's no reason, there's no reason for me to get it. Um, I have two copies of the Iliad. I have two copies of Lucy. I might but even is it have translated by a woman? Y'all, you know, the answer is no. Okay. Like, just stop. Just exactly. stop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Don't talk to me. Um, anyways. What do, do another one since I did two and then I only have two left and they're by the same author. Okay. There's this that I've been meaning to get to. The Stygian Collection by a bunch of booktubers including Ooh! Um, Jolene. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Jolene's from Book One Adventure Girl and um, Brian from Bookish okay. and quite a few other people. Yeah. Those are two big ones though. But yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like it'll be interesting. I don't know. That's awesome. I don't really know much about it's beautiful. things, but yeah. <laughs> I like the cover. Yeah. All right, you ready for my last one? I think you have read everything by this author. I think. Yeah. So I think so. But I have Sarah Waters. I've only yeah. read Fingersmith. Oh, you have? Yeah. I liked Fingersmith a lot, although I prefer the handmade and uh, the adaptation of it, the Korean movie. Oh, okay. But I liked the book quite a lot. It's very like rich in prose. Yeah, I've I've heard. I mean, they're just they're just a little chunky. <laughs> they they intimidate me as much as I love big books. Um, and I read them often. I just I still every every once in a while I get a little bit intimidated that I'm just going to be reading something really slowly and I'll be kind of stuck in it. Even though usually at the end of the experience I love it. It's just sometimes I just get a little bit intimidated. And so these, she intimidates me a little bit, but her, she's amazing. So yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. All right. And You're, it's all you. I'm done. I'm done. It's supposed to be like a Canadian postmodern masterpiece. Again, from Corona Samazat and from a Canadian, Robert oh, S. Stickley. That's a chunky book. Yeah, very. Yeah, it's a... She's a big one. So, yeah. And it's, oh, it's only 581 pages. That's actually not too Weird. bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm going to, uh, I don't know. I've been putting it off because I was like, this is a thousand pages. But it's actually not. So, yeah. Um, I actually don't really know anything about this beyond it's supposed to be very postmodern. <laughs> so, yeah. But it was, yeah, the one of the major reasons to put me over um the corona samazad limit other than um mark nash's book this is the oh. sort of second really big get yeah it's a cool yeah. book though like it's very i like the design mm -hmm. i'm done so you're it's all you oh. the last <laughs> one is another um daniel Lus daniel lusky oh mark the yeah yeah, the guy from House of Leaves. Yeah. This is one of five volumes of his postmodern work that it's supposed to be like I've heard it as like a um telenovela almost esque thing where it's like trying to go through the motions of like 
a very yeah. dramatic TV s- series or season. Like it's a seasonal thing. Like every book is meant to be a season of a sort of TV show. And it's again, huh. very postmodern. Uh, yeah. As you'd expect, it's very like, you know, different uh, layout things are happening. And yeah, I've just heard very good things, but it's also like a huge commitment. So with five volumes anyway, it's like, wow. Um, yeah. Doesn't, yeah, it's 823 pages at like that mark. <laughs> so about a thousand pages per probably. Yeah. But yeah, it's supposed to be incredible. I don't know. I don't know. That's what, that's what they say. That's what they say. That's what the people say. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing all the books trending in your soul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks to you as well <laughs> yeah although half of mine I felt like you've read so mm. yeah, but I mean that bodes well for you <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yeah 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 all right well I guess we shall say goodbye or at least maybe let us know what is trending in your soul if you're watching this and you want to share mm-hmm. it'd be awesome get us yeah, hyped yeah. up for any particular one yeah, if, if yeah, if you read one of these, then yes, hype us up. Mm-hmm. Okay, hype up the hype train, <laughs> <laughs> like a <All> bullet right. <laughs> train. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.